Wagwan, Wagwan, what's great? Here's John Morris again, man. Presenting to you today how to make gongo with rice. You know what I'm saying? It's a spin off of rice and peas. We know it's called beans, red kidney beans, but in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, we call it peas. You know what I'm saying? From? So when you hear we say rice and peas, please do not correct us and say rice and bean. A rice and peas is a thing. We know about sardines, mackerel, bully beans, chicken food. Chicken neck, chicken back, nothing our waste, nothing our dash way. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make rice and gongo peas. You feel my fault from? And here, we have the gongo. And we wash this about three times to get rid of all that dirt. And it has been soaking overnight with some fresh thyme and garlic. You know what I'm saying? Normally, we would put some pimento seeds in here, but I don't have any pimento. So once you put this to soak overnight, what happens is it gets the pods a bit softer and allow it to cook way quicker than normal. You know what I say? So listen to that now. Let me find a pod that is a bit soft. See? It makes them a bit softer when it's soaked in the water. So we put, of course, some garlic, fresh thyme. And as I said before, wash this twice to get rid of all that dirt. Add to that about three to four garlic cloves, about two stalks of fresh thyme, and about 12 grains of pimento. Pimento, you call it allspice. I don't have any, and that helps to tenderize the peas. Right now, I'm not gonna be cooking this straight in the pot. And this recipe that I'm using today is the recipe from my mother. She made a rice and peas video, like the authentic Jamaican rice and peas. You can check that out, I'll leave a link above gonna use a similar method but the only difference is we're using the gongo to make this one all right so right here I have my kosori cooker and this is one that a sponsor sent me earlier this last year now just gonna open that just gonna go right in with our gongo so for this we had a cup and a half of water in there to one pound of that um, gongo and that was soaking overnight now I'm going to add to that around four more cups. So in total we have about five and a half cups of water. Going to season that with some salt, about one and a half teaspoon. So we're going to close this. I'm going to put this on my bean and chili function. Now hit start. While our gongo is being cooked, we're going to work on our seasoning, right? So we have two stock of that green onion. About three to four stalks of fresh thyme. Just going to cut our green onions up. Rough chop, basically. Onto a plate. So it's good to prep your stuff while everything is cooking. So you save yourself some time, you know? Then I'm gonna go in with my grace coconut milk, but it's the um, bar. And this is 141 grams. I'm gonna cut this vertical because I want to get a bit of that um, oil from the coconut. That's where the flavor lies. Don't cut it across, you know? So about this much. Quarter of this should be good. Then to that, I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of butter because we're gonna nice this up in What you need to do when you're making your rice and peas or your gungo and rice is you need to have a piece of green scotch bonnet pepper. I blended all my peppers last night. So what I'm gonna be doing, here I have um, some fresh thyme, green onions, white onion, garlic, and that scotch bonnet pepper all of which we're going to be putting into our rice but if you have that scotch bonnet pepper you don't have to do all of that so i'm going to be using a spoon of this because it's a, about a teaspoon because it's still a bit hot with that scotch bonnet in there the reason why i'm using that is to get that scotch bonnet flavor you know i'm going to go in with a teaspoon of that right there and as i said it's a mixture of everything that we have here basically right here now is mommy's favorite if you watch our last video with the rice and peas she like Put a little brown sugar, nothing too much for to make it sweet. A 
about a teaspoon and a half. So you put that right there. Some brown sugar, you see it? Yeah. That I go get the rice and peas or the gungo rice, a nice little flavor. So once that um, gungo is cooked about three quarters of the way, then we can open that, add a little bit more water. Then we're gonna add all of this goodness, you know what I say? And we're gonna allow this to cook a little bit and then we we'll wash and add the rice. If you don't have a pressure cooker at home and you're gonna be cooking this piece straight in your pot on your stove, you're gonna be needing at least 45 minutes to an hour and then you check to see how tender those pods, those um, gungo pods are. You know what I mean? So you don't want to overcook them because remember you're going to add the rice and you're still going to cook it a bit more. I'm just going to open that up. So we're just going to do the testing to see if they're ready. It's a bit hot so be careful. Well look at that. Squishes so easily. So we're ready. We're at that 90% right? going to taste that liquid. This took me about 15 minutes to cook, right? Because this cooker is really good. If you're doing this on the stove, as I said, just monitor it to see how soft it is. I still need a bit more salt, but it's okay. That's why you put just about a tablespoon to begin with, then you can adjust it accordingly. I'm gonna go in now with another tablespoon of that salt, and then now we're gonna add our scallion, we're gonna add our green onion butter, coconut milk, that sugar, and that pepper mix, and the green, and the fresh thyme, you know what I'm saying? Right in there. Not gonna cover this with the pressure cooker, just gonna cover that regularly. I'm just gonna start that, just to get that boiling. In the meantime, I'm gonna wash our rice. Okay, so for that one pound of peas, we're gonna go in with four cups of rice. You know what I'm saying? And I'm using long grain white rice. So four cups for that. That's two, three, one more, four. We wanna wash this rice to get rid of most of that starch to prevent the rice from becoming sticky. And we're gonna wash it for about two to three times with room temperature water. And mommy wash three eyes right? like she wash two of them. I'm gonna pour this out. See how cloudy that water looks? Lots of starch. If you have a strainer, you keep it here. I'm so used to this, I use my hands. Give it a second wash. Alright, so let's see. Beautiful. Alright, so we're gonna ensure now when we stir this up to see if all that um, coconut cream has been melted. Alright, it has been melted. Perfect. Just gonna give that a taste again. You have to taste the pot in that with a little bit more salt. So, two and a half tablespoons of salt in there. I know two and a half tablespoons may sound a lot, but it's not a lot when you have all that liquid. So in total, we have five to six cup of liquid and then it's reduced now, you know? Add the wash rice to the liquid. All right, so it's gonna stir that around to evenly distribute all of those gungu throughout the rice. So to test this out, if you have enough water, use a wooden spoon and then you should have an inch from above the rice to the water. I'm using my finger here. So once it hits right here, then I'm, I know I'm good to go. So once you feel that rice, just real quick so you don't burn it. Boom. So perfect. One inch. That's the amount of water you want to know that's above the rice. I'm gonna close that now. I'm gonna adjust that to less on my cooker. And start. So that should take us about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for this rice to be cooked perfectly. Alright, so we're gonna check that rice. Okay, so let's check this rice. Let's remove these sticks. It's nice and ready, you know? Gungo rice. 
Boom. Look at that. Beautiful. This is amazing. Of course, we use mommy recipe. You see it? Yeah. Feed them a peep. If you see little red chunks, that's from the scotch bonnet pepper. Gonna add to that. Boom. Two pieces of fried plantain. You know the green one with the little salt on it. Gonna add some oxtail onto here and you're good to go. Add the seed there. And you can check out that video we just completed it. Hold on. Let me make this oxtail speak for itself. Let us make that oxtail speak for itself. Yes. Go down. Oh God. You know my plating garden, my people. It's normally a pretty, pretty plating, but today. And of course, you can't forget the beans on there. The gravy. Oh God. How could you ever? Some carrots and bell peppers. See there. Remove that. Get that sauce. Oh God. Alright, so there you have it. How to prepare your gongo and rice here on more time cooking it. If for any reason you enjoy this video, ensure to give this a thumbs up because this will recommend it to persons out there who want to know how to prepare the thing the Jamaican way. You feel me? I say hit that subscribe button and click on your post notifications for all our updates. We have over 200 videos, so don't miss out on those. You feel me? I say once again, you know. Thank you very much for watching and no flow for the love. Yeah, me see you now dinner for later. But know your fast girl and have to tell me. Cause I know any any man can feed you. So that's why I always take me to the kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah.